Hi, I'm Doc Jenny. Join us in the Green Hornet as we travel the back roads of beautiful North Idaho. Every day is different, challenging, and never boring as we see all the farm animals, big and small. Hey everybody, you're on the road with Dr. Grimmett in the Green Hornet. Today we're gonna to talk about your winter healthy horse checklist and how to, the things that you need to do in the fall to get your horse ready to go into winter. At least these are the things that we do with our horses. First of all, for any older horses or um, horses with any pre-existing health conditions, we recommend a veterinary visit in the fall as well as in the spring. We like to check these older horses or um, horses with health problems out before we go into winter and usually early in the fall to make sure that if there are any health problems that we can take care of them adequately before the hard, cold months of winter hit, especially weight conditions. And if there are problems that we need to address as far as their weight or their feeding, that we can get that addressed because it's awfully difficult to put weight on a horse in the late fall season. They're already gearing up for winter. They're growing a winter coat their energy needs are all already greater and trying to feed them extra to put on weight is tough that time of year. So we like to see them early in the fall so that we can help to get them ready for winter. Next on the list is shoes. In our area where we get a lot of snow and ice, we do recommend pulling your standard keg shoes off before the ground is slippery and before we get a lot of snow. That can sometimes be hard to time so if your horse does have shoes on and we do get a light snowfall, be sure that you're watching them for ice building up in the shoes so that they're not twisting an ankle or slipping. Uh, it's also important to make sure that your horse is on footing that is not going to be bruising their feet. Hoof abscesses are another problem that we see this time of year due to the hard ground going from, in our area at least, really muddy ground to hard frozen ground can predispose the horses for hoof abscesses this time of year. It's important to schedule a fall visit from your farrier either to remove the shoes or trim the feet to make sure that your horse's feet are healthy and ready to take on the winter conditions including that hard frozen ground or the snow that we can get that will pack into their feet if they still have shoes on. If you have a horse that needs to have shoes on through the winter uh, we do recommend either snow pads that help to keep the snow from balling in the foot or borium shoes that provide traction on the icy ground. We also recommend updating your flu and rhino vaccines or other risk-based vaccines if you're going to be boarding your horse or continuing to travel to events in the winter time. If your horse is going to be staying home between the months of October and April, then they do not need a second booster of the vaccines for flu or rhino because their exposure is going to be minimal if they're staying home. But if you're doing some traveling and exposing your horse to other horses, then the other risk-based vaccines are recommended. Be sure you discuss those vaccine choices with your veterinarian. We also recommend deworming in the fall. So in our area, we deworm after the first frost. We've certainly had that this year. Uh, we like to deworm with a product that includes ivermectin and praziquantel. The praziquantel is marketed specifically for tapeworms, so we'll deworm with an ivermectin praziquantel product in the fall to get rid of tapeworms and bot flies, as well as the other parasites. Warm water is also on our list. This is the time of year you want to make sure that you get your tank heaters into your troughs. Even though our daytime temperatures are still pretty warm, I do recommend that your heaters are plugged in if your water is going to be freezing overnight. As the horses are adjusting to the changes in temperature, that's when we can see these fall colics from the horses not drinking enough. Providing a warm water source will help to encourage your horses to drink. Along that same topic of encouraging your horses to drink is salt. Having a salt block available is always a good idea, and we do recommend the Redmond Natural Salt rocks. The horses seem to um, utilize those more than a standard salt block. But this time of year when those rocks are just a frozen lump of ice, it does help to feed a loose salt in with any of your grain rations or just provide a bunker of loose salt. The horses are more likely to use the loose salt than they are to lick on that frozen block of ice. Just like you're not going to walk up and lick the flagpole, 
horses generally aren't going to spend a lot of time licking on the um, frozen salt blocks in the winter. The exception to that would be the mineral lick tubs, uh, the ones that have a little bit of a molasses base. If your horse doesn't have any um, metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance, those can be a great way to both keep your horse from getting bored this time of year because they're not doing as much. It provides a little bit of stimulation that way and it is a great way to get some minerals into them as well. Many of those tubs also include a little bit of protein so if you're feeding just a strictly grass hay but you'd like to increase the protein in your diet adding a protein lick tub is a great way to do that. I think that's everything on our list for our fall checkup for your horses. Be sure and tune in next time and this is Dr. Jenny signing out. Hey everybody! Thanks for riding with us in the Green Hornet today. This is Doc Jenny signing out. If you like what you saw, be sure and follow us in the Green Hornet with Tormund out on the road with Doc Jenny. Just click the link below and follow us along on our journeys. See you later.